here in the heartland. This is the working man. These are the fields of dreams of America. No, you can't take that away. Cause I want to stay here in the heartland. I'm here in the heartland. Today we're going to talk to you about the Spirit Lake Massacre that occurred on March 8th of 1857. Nearly 38 settlers perished and four were taken prisoner. And the story of the Spirit Lake Massacre is one of those stories that has evolved and changed as time goes by. And what I mean by that is this. The whole story actually begins nearly a decade earlier when Henry Lott and his family came to Iowa and they settled on the north shore of the Boone River near the confluence of the Des Moines River, just north of Boone, Iowa. And Henry Lott was a trader with the Native Americans. Some of his business practices were very questionable. So in December of 1846, when Siddle Menadota and some of his warriors came to Henry Lott's cabin to get their horses back, Henry Lott was down the river ways and he could see them approaching. Him and one of his sons hid along the banks of the Moines River and watched what unfolded. After Cinnamon and Dota and his men went through the cabin, took some of the Lot's belongings and grabbed their horses, Henry Lot had gone further down the Moines River to try to find help. So Henry Lot travels down the Des Moines River all the way to Elk Rapids. Now Elk Rapids is on the Des Moines River just west of present day Madrid, Iowa. And if you look back at last week's episode, the Dragoon Trail, the High Trestle Bridge is roughly where Johnny Green's band of some Meskwaki and Potawatomi Native Americans were living. He seeked their help to return to his cabin. Upon returning to his cabin, Henry Lott's wife was very distraught, and she would pass roughly a week or so after this event. And his son Milton they could not find. After some time of searching, they finally found Milton nearly 20 miles south of the cabin along the banks of the Des Moines River where he had died due to exposure of the winter elements. Milton Lott was 12 years old. And a month later, he was buried in that spot, and today his grave is marked as the first settler to die in Boone County. Now, Henry Lott is very upset, and he wants to seek revenge on Simadota. And so Henry Lott kind of befriended Simadota and started to trade with him again. And in the winter of 1852-53, Henry Lott avenged his family and brought an end to Simadota's family. And now this is where the story takes another twist. Now, Simadota's brother was Ink Paduta. Well, as time progressed, Ink Paduta now wants to seek revenge on Henry Lott. And as we move forward, we get up to about 1856-1857. And in the summer of 1856, the Gardner family and roughly about 40 settlers settled in that area of Spirit Lake. Today we know it as Arnold's Park, where East Okoboji and West Okoboji and Spirit Lake are all located. But that whole area was just kind of known as the Spirit Lake area. Now, when the Gardners first arrived there, it was beautiful. Plentiful game, the prairie, beautiful place. And as they built their settlement kind of late in the year, they weren't able to get their crops and agriculture just as they wanted it. In the winter of 1857, not only are the settlers struggling to make it, but the Native Americans in that region are also struggling. So as Ink Padua and his men come through the Spirit Lake area, and they see that frontier families have settled on their sacred land, they become very upset. Ink Padua's anger with wanting to avenge Sidamadota's tragedy at the hands of Henry Lott, coupled with failed treaties, poor treatment, and the harsh winter of 1857, came to a boiling point on March 8th with the Spear Lake Massacre. Now, from that event along the shores, this went on from about March 8th to March 12th. And Ink Paduta would take the four prisoners, two of them would perish en route, and two of them would be traded back, with the last one being Abby Gardner. Abby Gardner was held prisoner for nearly 84 days, traveling with Ink Paduta's warriors up into Minnesota and beyond. Eventually, she was traded back, and she returned back to Iowa, where in 1891, she would come back to Spear Lake, Arnold's Park, Iowa, and she would purchase the family cabin and start the first tourist attraction of Iowa. Today you can still see the cabin. The cabin sits in its original location just minutes away from Arnold's Park in Arnold's Park, Iowa. So when we look at this event, there's several different factors. As westward expansion occurred, settlers faced many hardships, while Native Americans faced many challenges in trying to maintain their ancestral land. As a reminder to all our visitors, all Iowa students have free admission to the Iowa Hall of Pride thanks to Musco Lighting. I think for me to be an Iowan is, is to, to be someone that knows the value of hard work, that knows the value of, of family and, and, and that whole type of thinking. 
Are we flashy? No. Are we dependable? Yes. Do we work hard? Yes. And are, do we love our country? Yes. I just, I just think that to be in Iowa and we're the, this state is the salt of the earth. I really do. And, uh, and it's maybe not a lot of flash and not a lot of frills, but who cares? Uh, Iowa's the place for me. With harvest season in full swing, this week we're taking you to Z-Ring to take a real look at rural Iowa. Uh, this is old technology here. We're using GPS for yield monitor and uh, things like that and does some mapping and things, but uh, they do, I don't have the steering, they, they've got steering, they've got everything anymore. So. From Zering, Iowa, and uh, I guess I was actually born on this farm. <laughs> it's kind of unusual maybe, but not, not in those days. And uh, I've farmed here, other than being in the military for a couple of years, I've been here most all my life, I guess. So. 40s and 50s, uh, this farm here typically would have had uh, 320 acres. It had 40 acres of oats and 40 acres of alfalfa. And uh, before beans came in, the rest was corn. And then gradually beans came in and you went to a corn, soybean, oats, hay rotation. We had a lot more pheasants and stuff around there at that time because hay ground is really a good pheasant <laughs> growing thing. But uh, morphed into more of the uh, corn soybean rotation because that's what Iowa does and that's what grows good here so they say why don't you try something else well it's been working for a long time and that's what we do <laughs> kind of a balancing act everybody does that no matter what kind of things they do they have to balance family and work and everything together but it was a lot of fun good way to raise kids at, I think at the time <laughs> These always were telling us, you know, another 10 years we won't be able to feed the world and it uh, seemed like we got one bushel too much all the time anymore and, uh, and the world keeps growing but we keep overproducing and we can't start getting much money for it. So this wraps up 55 years of farming here in the home place here. What are you looking to do uh, for retirement now? Well, I don't know. I, I like to garden and do a bunch of that stuff. and. And of course, fishing and uh, hunting are one of my passions if I can still walk. So I, I was hoping I could still get around long enough to do some of that yet. But I guess that's about it. There's an, always this best before a certain date, you know. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering what that might be. <laughs>